The venerable M1 Abrams has been America's main battle tank for more than four decades, thanks to a long series of incremental upgrades that have allowed it to remain one of the world's most fearsome pieces of armor. But as foreign militaries roll out next generation smart tanks that shoot, move, and communicate on a whole new level, General Dynamics is pitching something new. An Abrams for a whole new era of warfighting. Let's talk about the Abrams X. I'm Alex Hollings. Welcome to Firepower. As I mentioned in the first episode from this series, I've been a defense journalist for a pretty long time now, but in recent years, I primarily have focused on aviation, or air power. So while a lot of the scripts for this series will be written by me, occasionally I'll be leaning on the excellent work from the team of journalists we have at Sandbox News. And this week's episode is exactly such a case. Today, I'll be relying on the work from Hope Hodge Sec, who's an award-winning military journalist with an incredible resume. Not only was Hope the managing editor at Military.com for some time, but she also regularly writes for large mainstream outlets like the Washington Post and Politico, and alongside nerds like me at Popular Mechanics. This year, in 2023, Hope was selected as a fellow for the Modern Warfare Initiative, which is sponsored by the Modern War Institute out of West Point. All that is to say that as we dive into the Abrams X, we're in very good hands. So without any further ado, let's dive right into it. A demonstrator version of the Abrams X made its debut on the show floor of the Association of the U.S. Army's annual meeting this past October. It was painted in an eye-catching gray and black sawtooth color scheme, but the Abrams X's most important qualities aren't as visible to the naked eye. This tank aims to address some of the Army's most long-standing beefs with the M1 Abrams, all while building in cutting-edge technology and protection systems, ranging from artificial intelligence to drone launchers. The most notable differences between the Abrams of today and the Abrams X all have to do with weight and power. The M1 Abrams has gotten progressively heavier over the years. Initially, the program aimed to field the tank that weighed less than 50 tons, but that soon went right out the window. And today, with all of the Army-built armor packages, it weighs in at a hefty 73.6 tons. That means the Abrams is heavier than any of its competitors in the main battle tank arena. And as a lot of veterans like myself can attest, gaining a bunch of weight as you get older can really wreak havoc on your maneuverability. All that heft also adds to the fact that the Abrams is a massive gas guzzler. It uses 10 gallons of fuel just to start the engine, close to 2 gallons to travel a mile, and up to 10 gallons per mile when idling. Even before the U.S. military started to lean into climate change resiliency, this kind of fuel use was a huge liability, especially in forward locations, because the fuel needs and maintenance requirements of the Abrams makes it extremely reliant on overland resupply routes. By comparison, the Abrams X weighs in at just 60 tons, according to Timothy Rees, the Director of Business Development for General Dynamics Land Systems. Rees spoke to Hope Sec for Sandbox News at AUSA this past October, and he explained to her that the new tank cuts weight by moving the crew from inside the turret to inside the hull, which allows them to remove some of the heavy armor on the front of the turret. The new design also breaks from a long-standing American tradition and includes an autoloader with built-in safety mechanisms, which eliminates the need for a human tank loader like the Abrams uses today. That reduces the crew size in the Abrams X from 4 to 3. While the tank's top land speed will remain about the same, Reese did say that the lighter displacement will make it a lot more maneuverable, which is key for operations like crossing bridges or covering difficult terrain. Reese also acknowledged that these designs are, quote, kind of radical for the Army. In building the uncrewed turret and autoloader, Reese and General Dynamics were paying attention to lessons they learned from Ukraine, where, as we explained in a previous episode from this series, Russian tanks have taken a very public and embarrassing beating. As Reese puts it, a lot of people see those tank turrets in Ukraine blowing up like a Roman candle. 
He was, of course, referring to Russian T-72 tanks, which store their ammo below the crew in the turret and are prone to a deadly jack-in-the-box effect when the turret is penetrated. Like the original Abrams design, the Abrams X keeps its ammunition in a sealed compartment behind the main part of the turret, and blast doors open only momentarily when loading around before sealing right back up again. I'll quote Reese here. If there's ever a secondary detonation, it is not going to blow off the whole turret. It's just going to blow off the back panel where the ammo is stored. Unlike many modern main battle tanks that run on diesel, today's Abrams is powered by a Honeywell AGT-1500 gas turbine engine that, for all intents and purposes, was practically yanked out of a helicopter. While this engine is admittedly very fuel-hungry, it does have some advantages. It's considered extremely quiet compared to a lot of other tank engines, and it doesn't produce visible diesel exhaust plumes, which makes the Abrams sometimes jokingly referred to as something of a stealth tank. But the Abrams X takes this concept significantly further. The Abrams X replaces that 1970s era gas turbine with a new diesel hybrid electric system. When combined with a high-powered electric generator, this system produces as much power for the tank as the old gas turbine did, but with an incredible 50% fuel savings. And in the interest of stealthiness, the batteries powered by that generator will allow the crew to use systems on board the tank, like its electronics, optics, and communication systems, without having to turn on the diesel engine. And that provides a real battlefield advantage. As Reese puts it, you're better able to hide your position for a longer duration of time. Now, if there's anything we've learned from footage out of Ukraine, it's that in the 21st century, tanks can be extremely vulnerable to aerial attacks from systems like drones. According to Reese, the Abrams X design features an amped up active protection system with exactly this threat in mind. Today's Abrams are protected from incoming anti-tank missiles and rocket-propelled grenades by the Trophy Active Protection System, which uses two active electronically scanned radar arrays and two rotating launchers. When those radars detect an incoming missile or rocket-propelled grenade, those launchers send out explosively formed projectiles to intercept them before they can make contact with the tank. The Abrams X, on the other hand, includes a third radar array and launcher. These ones pointed straight up. I'll quote Reese again. So, instead of the two that normally create the donut around the vehicle, we have a third one that creates a dome over the top for 360 degrees. It's not fully developed yet, but it's close. Reese went on to clarify that while the Abrams X does use that same trophy active protection system, the tank could feasibly use any of these systems that the army ends up choosing. Also new for the Abrams X is the incorporation of the Catalyst Next Generation Electronic Architecture, or NGEA, which is a modular open architecture developed independently by General Dynamics Land Systems that actually uses artificial intelligence to help with a wide variety of tanker tasks. This AI can help with the detection and recognition of inbound objects, with target prioritization and navigation like avoiding obstacles when planning a path. The NGEA also provides the kind of situational awareness that we usually talk about when discussing the distributed aperture system in the F-35. General Dynamics calls it see-through armor, which is to say that like the F-35, it gives the crew the ability to look directly through the tank and get an unobstructed view of the battlefield thanks to perimeter cameras mounted around the tank's hull. But we're not done yet. At the back of the tank, there are four launchers for Switchblade 300 munitions, which are also commonly referred to as kamikaze, or suicide drones. These unmanned aerial systems are controlled by the crew inside the hull of the tank. And because the crew can watch a live feed from the camera of the Switchblade, it allows them to extend their field of view as far as they send this munition. NGEA also gives crews the ability to control a variety of other UAVs and robotic ground vehicles, all from within the tank's hull itself, using their existing control panels. The Abrams X keeps the 120mm main gun from the Abrams, with the XM360 gun tube developed by the Army that reduces weight by about a half. It also swaps out the Abrams 50 caliber heavy machine gun for a new remotely controlled 30mm turret, which, 
according to Reese and some guys I've spoken to, elicits an emotional response from soldiers. They all really seem to either love this idea or absolutely hate it. The new design also makes the gunner's sights independent from the turret, and allows both the gunner and commander to scan the battlefield independently and without rotating the turret. But as Reese puts it, these systems aren't set in stone, and General Dynamics Land Systems is waiting to see what the Army's priorities are. I'll quote him here. Some people would like to see a medium caliber round there instead of a machine gun round, with an airburst capability or a high explosive capability. The idea being, maybe some targets I can destroy with that medium cannon and I don't need to fire a main gun round. So again, it's one of these things where we would like to have collaboration with the army and say, what's the combination that makes sense to you? And then we can provide it. Now, to be clear, there are no current plans to move the Abrams X into active production. Right now, it's still just a technology demonstrator. But one thing is for sure. The U.S. military has been paying close attention to the challenges facing tanks on the modern battlefield as we watch this conflict in Ukraine play out. And many of the capabilities brought to bear by the Abrams X are aimed specifically at those challenges. So, while the future of this specific tank is still up in the air, it does offer us a valuable glimpse into the future of tank warfare. Because as we discussed in the last episode from this series, the era of tanks is far from over. Russia just sucks at using them. And with that ends this edition of Firepower from Sandbox News. I'm Alex Hollings. I want to thank HopeSec one more time for writing the incredible article that this script was based on, as well as Hector Tinoco for doing the editing on this video. Make sure you swing by sandboxnews.com today and every day for all the latest in news, entertainment, and motivation from all around the force. If you got anything out of today's video, make sure to click like and subscribe down below and leave me a comment so I know what I should cover next. And of course, don't forget to tap on that bell icon so you never miss a drop from Sandbox News.